Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. So um, before I begin anything, I just want to ask uh, some two questions. How many of you here are web developers? Awesome. And how many of you have had their hands on developing for virtual reality experiences? That's less. Cool. So the aim of this session is primarily to make the count of these two groups probably equal. Little about me, as she already said, I'm a tech speaker from Mozilla. And professionally, I work as a software developer at HSBC. And I've been contributing for quite some time. And A-Frame is something I've been working for for a year. And it's interesting. Now, virtual reality, um, a, by definition, if we go, it's basically the computer-generated simulation of a 3D image or an environment, and which can be interacted with in a seemingly real or a physical manner. So it's basically a technology that transports you to completely different interactive and 3D environment. And you can already see how cool things people are doing in the background. It's, it's going to be the next platform. It's going to completely change how we live, work, and play. And it's relatively new. Uh, we are still in the first generation of headsets. We have some like the Google Cardboard on the first one. It costs around $5, and it's, it gives a basic, very basic VR experience, a 360 degree, very low FPS and field of view, and um, not such uh, not a very good experience, but good enough for a beginner to get started. And then there are high-end VR headsets, like the HTC Vive at the end. Um, it has two controllers. It has base stations. And you can um, go around. It, it has complete room scale tracking, both positional and rotational tracking, great field of view. But the thing is that you have to connect it to a PC with a very high processing power. And um, for, especially for me, like in India, they don't really have HTC Vives. So we have to uh, import it from the US. And then the custom charge is very expensive. We pay almost a double. And then assembling such a PC is probably more. And then, so basically, we, we were discussing day before yesterday, VR is not yet for the common man, but it, it is soon going to be. So, uh, but that said, the experiences provided by these headsets are absolutely mesmerizing. And these are the kinds of headsets that the VR industry is focusing on, is targeting. But the problem for developers is that there's a lot of friction in the VR ecosystem. And uh, what I mean by that is that you have to uh, go through, um, there are a lot of gatekeepers. You cannot just um, build something and share it with the world, like, hey, I built this, Can you check it out. You cannot do that, because you have to go through a lot of approvals. For example, the Oculus Store, it takes only the top, rated, top ones into the store. The rest are rejected. So app stores and corporations, they control distribution. They can take down your content or block it. And even if you go through all these procedures, you will have to make other people download your application. And for them, it's a complete black box, right? They don't know what's going on inside. And speaking of downloads, you yourself will have to download a lot of bulky software and complex setups just for the development. So these things are huge obstacles. You probably have to learn a new language. And then you'll spend some time fiddling around, figuring out how to make it work with multiple headsets. We want VR to be successful, right? So we want these, a platform without these points of friction. And the answer to that is indeed WebVR. So WebVR is basically allows web developers to create fantastic cross-platform, cross-device applications, VR experiences. Um, quoting from a talk in Google I.O., VR should be accessible to everyone, because it has the potential to let everyone play, explore, and create in amazing new ways. So developers should be able to build something quickly and share it with everyone, no matter what device they are on. Kind of how easy it is to share stuff on the web, but in VR. And that is the very idea behind WebVR. It's VR on the web for everyone. Anyone can create anything just like they create their regular websites, that is, with web technologies. And of course, it has all the properties of the web. It's open. Anyone can publish, open source, open standards, open culture. It's connected. You can tra uh, traverse worlds and scenes and portals 
just like hyperlinks in the 2D web. And it's instant, of course. You just click a link, and bam, you're there. You can just share it with the world. You can tweet it, like check out my what I've built. So more specifically, these are browser APIs that enable WebGL rendering to the headsets and access to VR sensors. It was initially by Mozilla, the WebVR API. Then uh, currently, uh, uh, there's a working W3C community group. And um, Mozilla, uh, Samsung, Microsoft, I mean, all these browsers have currently implementing uh, WebVR 1.0 API. So these are the browsers that support it. Firefox was one of the first browsers to sub fully support WebVR. It started with Nightly. It's currently in the release channels also after Firefox 55. And there are these other browsers. Mobile Polyfill uses your mobile device orientation sensors to polyfill on smartphones. So the concept of metaverse from the science fiction, as we know, it's, it's, the idea is basically collective virtual persistent spaces and where the world might live in, they might work and play in. And to achieve it, uh, we, we need to have it decentralized, it must be open, it must be connected. You cannot have one corporation controlling the world people live in. So um, how, how can we make it more accessible? Because uh, as we saw yesterday in a talk, 3JS is one of the libraries used to create content in WebVR, but it is still very hard. I mean, the developers don't tell you that, but it is still very hard to create experiences in uh, 3JS. You need to import a VR polyfill, set up camera, lights, VR effect, et cetera, et cetera. All these, so many things, these are a huge obstacle. If you're just, just I want to build something very basic. I'm a new beginner. I just want to go and experiment something. But this is a huge obstacle for me. So I want a platform which, in which I can just concentrate on what I actually want to build. These, this boilerplate code, it probably needs updating with the newer versions of 3JS, WebVR, and browser quirks. What if we could make it more accessible? What if we could encapsulate all of this into a single line, just one single line? Well, introducing A-Frame. A-Frame is an open source web framework for building virtual reality experiences. And it helps developers, web developers, build VR content without graphics knowledge. And it helps you prototype VR UX faster. And it's basically a quick kickstart to the VR ecosystem. The best part is that you can create a lot of A-frame uh, scenes entirely in simple plain HTML. Now, all of us have probably studied HTML in high school. And even if we haven't, how much time does it take to learn HTML? It's a couple of hours, that's it. Doesn't it sound super easy now? So uh, let's just see a Hello World example in A-Frame. So uh, by the way, just when using A-Frame, you need to include the script tag, and that's it. There are no build steps as such. And remember how I told you about uh, encapsulating all the boilerplate code in a single line? This a scene tag is the global object in A-Frame that does that for you. It en encapsulates, it does all of it, like camera, render, controls, VR effect, web VR, polyfill, everything just magically does that. And you do not have to put any extra effort on things you don't want to do. You can concentrate on the actual business logic. So let's start putting stuff inside our scene. So here I've used a box, a cylinder, a sphere, a plane, respectively. These are the primitives provided by a frame, just out of the box respectively to build cylinders, spheres, et cetera. And components in A-frame are like CSS tags. You can just uh, add them like CSS tags. And sky is basically the sky, the world, the surrounding world. It can be a 360 degree image or a color. This is just a very basic Hello World application. But just look at this piece of code. It is so uh, readable. I mean, HTML is arguably the most accessible language in computing. And this is encapsulated. So if you copy paste this code somewhere else, it will work. There are no states or variables as such. 
And of course, for, ex for very advanced applications, you probably have to write some JavaScript for the logic or the components. But that's about it. You have the full power of the web, and it is so easy. It's beginner friendly. Um, so with those four lines of code, we have this scene created. We can move around using a headset and check it out. This is a very basic scene, but, we own the, but what it took was only four lines of code. So we're already one step closer to the metaverse we talked about. And this scene, by the way, is an A-frame scene embedded in my HTML slides. And I can just modify it and change it using the DOM inspector. And now since it's based on HTML, it works with all your existing and favorite libraries and frameworks. So you have D3, Vue, React, Redux, all, all of it, you name it, you have it. And this is a really good reason of having HTML as an intermediary layer for uh, WebGL 3.js. And underneath, it's just an um, extensible declarative framework for 3.js. So A-Frame uses an entity component system architecture. Uh, this is an architectural pattern um, famous in 3D and game development. Those of you who have worked on Unity must be aware of it. It's particularly famous in Unity. So the concept is that um, everything, it, it's basically promoting the idea of composition over inheritance and hierarchy. Everything in a scene is, um, is an object, which is inherently an entity which is empty, it does not have anything of its own, any appearance of its own, but you can plug in components to add appearance, behavior, and functionality. Now, in the 2D web, we lay out elements with fixed behavior in a hierarchy. But in 3D and VR, things are absolutely different. It can be, I mean, the objects can have infinite types and complexities. So there is a need of a unique, I mean, of a different way of building up objects. And ECS provides that. Uh, and it, it promotes cleaner design by um, encapsulation, decoupling, reusability. It removes all the problems associated with long inheritance chains, interwoven functionality. So for example, this is an entity. You have an entity which is the base of all the objects. It does not have anything of its own. It's kind of like an empty div tag in HTML if, uh, without the components. You can plug in components, which are modules or data containers, to add the appearance, behavior, and functionality. So here we have the geometry component, which might have its own properties, like sphere or the radius and the parameters. We add the material component. So we can keep adding components, like plug and play, to reuse, to mix and match and configure and build up an entity. It's like alchemy. So for example, if you have a ball, this is an entity. It has a geometry, certain geometry and materials, sphere and some leather, probably. And then you add the light component. So it becomes a glowing ball. Then you add the sound component. It becomes a singing, glowing ball. And then you add the explode component. It becomes an exploding, singing, glowing ball. The point being that you can just keep adding components onto an entity to build up the entity, and you can construct any kind of object. This is the concept of composition. So for, uh, while coding, what we do is, for any entity, we use an A entity tag. You can add uh, the geometry material, like I specified before, and keep building up the entity by continuously adding components. You can just keep adding components as much as you want. Like I've added rotation, position on x, y, z axis here. So the, uh, the, these are the components that ship in A-Frame out of the box. Um, these are provided by default. But A-Frame has a huge community, and uh, they've been building up a lot of components and using the awesome stuff. And these are some advanced developers who are helping empower other developers who have built tons of components. You have everything. These components can do anything they have full access to the JavaScript and the DOM APIs. And there are, these are like, you just name it, you have it. You, you have all the kinds of components ready-made built for you, like networked 
uh, networked scene for building multi-user applications. You have particle system, you have oceans, you have sound, you have audio visualizations. You have a lot of components ready-made, just built in, just ready for use. And these are all curated in something known as a registry. Now, a registry is kind of like a store, an asset store, a free asset store, where you can just go and search for components, install them. For installing them, all you need to do is drop the script tag. And that's like a very convenient curated collection of A-frame components. For example, if you have a leap hands component, now you can just drop the script tag in your uh, code, and in the pro actual program, you can include it, as we can see here. And you'll have two hands, and you can do whatever you want with them. Now, A-Frame also comes with a visual inspector. So it's a keyboard shortcut. Whenever you press Control-Alt-I in any A-Frame scene, you, can, you get to a completely different view, a completely different uh, it takes you to a 3D grid-based system where you can uh, pick up and drop objects, you can add components, and you can move around things, you can change values. It's like a 3D analog, VR analog of the browser DOM inspector that we have. It's just that it has many more features. You can even copy the changes made, it, uh, made and you can paste it into the actual code. So. Uh, of course, JavaScript, um, you can programmatically change components in the scene uh, using JavaScript. Uh, we can do all the little things like query selector, query selector all for getting a reference to the scene and its entities. We have um, set attribute to modify the entities. We have append child to add the modified entities onto the scene. We can probably create a random, uh, use a random for loop in JavaScript and add 50 A boxes on random locations. You have event listeners to, you can register handler functions to perform a particular something when a user performs a particular action, when a particular Im event is emitted. And all these little things, you have basically all the power of JavaScript available with you, all the power of web technologies available with you, and it is easy. Now, you can even add 3D models, of course. 3D models basically come with plain text files, and uh, they have the textures, animations, etc. They also come along with images. And you can basically, the 3JS loaders parse these files and render them as meshes in the scene. And A frame model components wrap around these 3JS loaders. So, this is. Um, the 360-degree image of Park Guell, and there is, if you can see, a 3D model of a queen right there in front of. I can move it around. It can be animated also. It's up to me, I mean. And all I had to do to import this into my scene was use the OBJ model component, because this is OBJ file and material file. I included it, and I can add components like scale, position, rotation. This is an entity. I can add as many components as I want. And there I have it. So uh, speaking of multi-user applications, I'll just give an example of how you can use um, components to build multi-user applications. Now, you might think that to enable multiple users, we have to know all the concepts about servers and complicated networking protocols. Well, this component, the answer is, of course, no, not anymore. The networked A-frame component has you covered. So all you need to do is just include it in your file, and it, it, it abstracts away all the complex um, concepts that you might not be aware of. To begin with, we have this basic uh, template. We have an a scene, a scene that we already know about. We don't have anything inside it. We have included the script tags of the required files. So if we add the networked scene component besides a scene. So like in entities, we keep adding components. This networked a scene component, a frame component, we want for the entire scene. So we add it besides a scene. This is just a basic template. Uh, app, you can check out the syntax and the documentation. This is a unique app ID, unique room ID. 
and now we create an avatar. So basically what I've done here is created a sphere using a sphere, another two spheres for eyes, white color, another two spheres for black pupils, that's it. That's all that is there in this code. Now, I, I want it to come out, I mean, the scene must be built, but it's all popping it at the same place. So I want to come, uh, I want to have it at random locations. I want the avatar to pop up in random locations in different sessions in the different clients. So I just wrote simple JavaScript to randomize the location, the position, just five, six lines. And I can include that component in my uh, a entity ID equals to player tag, and I can keep adding. Uh, I have to add networked ID equals to template something, whatever template I have built, and I have to add the component that I just wrote for randomizing the location, and that's it. So this is just to make a little more prettier and to add up a little spice. I have a grid, a black colored grid on the ground, and I have a colorful sky with snow kind of stuff falling in. So uh, basically, the scene has been built, but this is just to modify the background and the environment. And if you check out this URL right now, we will have something like this, the GIF. You will have multiple uh, users. If you open it right now, you probably can see other users um, looking here and there and popping into the scene. So that was about the multi-user applications. So that was super easy, right? We just wrote a few lines of code, and we built a very pretty cute application. And as I said, A-Frame has a huge community. It, um, I mean, people have been working a lot, uh, contributing to the code base as well as the components. Aframe.io blog is where there are many things released. Like there is something known as a week of Aframe. Every week there are featured applications that are released. I mean, if you can just build your application and tweet it with Aframe VR, they'll probably feature your application in the week of Aframe if it's good. Now, these are some examples of the components uh, of A-Frame applications already built by some users. Um, A-Painter is a clone of Google Tilt, Shift, Tilt Paint that was built. Uh, it was to show how powerful A-Frame can be. You can just take two brushes and put on a headset with controllers and paint around, and instead of building your own models in Blender or complicated softwares like that, you can just paint your own stuff and import it into your scene. This is something cool. And uh, journalism, well, this, this, it's a journalism application. This was built to show the happenings in Syria, the bombings, etc. This was another journal journalism application. This is, a sand, this is a city builder, a game built by uh, someone to show how we can use A-Frame for games also. You just need to pick up and drop things which you want to have in your city. This is a city builder application. This is my personal favorite, data visualization. You can just have multiple um, variables and columns. You can put it into the box, and you can just visualize it in 3D. You can have data visualization in 3D, and it's really beautiful and useful. This is another gaming application, A Blast. You just use your controllers to hit some mosquitoes, but that's a game. Prototyping is very useful for prototyping, of course. You can have uh, your product in vir virtual reality. You can see it, how it looks like, and you can build it, and then you can maybe move on to building the final product. It's good for mathematics. It's, it's also useful for visualizing in 3D the graphs and calculating, et cetera. AR.js is a framework that is being built currently, and it is very uh, new, and it's under development. But it's something very interesting and allows you to develop AR applications using A-Frame. So uh, using, it actually uses AR toolkit and lets you build using A-Frame. It's still in its very um, initial stages, but it's being developed and making great progress. It is something good to check out. It's, uh, it builds marker-based 
AR applications. And there have been tools built on top of uh, A-Frame to enable you to, co uh, without coding, you can build virtual reality applications. So WebVR Studio is one of them. Real Estate Live Tour, this is also an interesting application. Education, so for example, if, you, uh, if there's a student studying for becoming a doctor or medicines, so you cannot uh, practice on a real human, right? But you can do all this, pick up a heart and do all that to a man in virtual reality, it's just virtual reality, right? So that's interesting for practice. So A-Frame has a lot of um, contributors and stargazers on GitHub. There are many, lot, many members on Slack. If you check out aframe.io slash community, you get all the information about how to get involved. And it's really interesting, and it's still in its initial stages, stages so it's a very good platform to contribute and to get started with. And there are lots of featured projects, as I talked about. A week of A-Frame and awesome A-Frame are some repositories. Now, uh, there is a contest going on currently, 13 KJS games that happens every year. But this year, there's an A-Frame category also. So I would probably recommend applying to it. All you have to do is just submit your game uh, and it has to be 13 kilobytes of a file excluding the A-Frame library. And just for participating, you probably get an A-Frame special headset and T-shirts, and it's something really cool. I would recommend applying to it. And other than that, I would recommend uh, checking out the documentation of A-Frame. It's very exhaustive. Uh, it's really very informative. You can um, go and check out the syntax of various primitives and components available. So yeah, that's kind of about how much I can talk about in 30 minutes, but you should definitely check the documentation. Thank you, and thanks for having me at Full Stack Fest. Thank you so much, Agusta. That was really inspiring. Um, I have a few questions here for you. Can you talk more about the performance concerns on web versus mobile? OK. Uh, so. Uh, you, I think you mean native. So I think that's a very common question whenever someone talks about the web. Um, the performance, of course, undeniably, native uh, applications have a little better performance. There is a little cost that you pay when you go for web applications in terms of the graphics performance. But in exchange, you get this um, incredible power of distribution. And that is sometimes very much worth a price paying for. And uh, other than that, there have been developments in the, so you can use all the regular things that you do with JavaScript, like WebAssembly. You can have web, work web workers which can parse things off the main thread. And other than that, there have been developments like streaming content, so you get a basic immersive experience in 300 milliseconds, but um, that's not fully, um, I mean, you can, um, it gets more improved and as and when it gets hardware and resources. But you, have an exp you don't have to wait for the download of the 3D models or something. So that's, that's yeah, that's awesome. what I have to say. Thank you. Um, what are you most excited about in terms of the future of VR and web VR? So uh, my personal interest and uh, an area of research I would like to see is in, in the field of education. So uh, there are a lot of possibilities in education, like I showed how, how we can uh, practice um, medicines in, yeah. in, in education. And I've also, like, I work for a bank, so I've been working on software for a bank, like when a, a person can go into a virtual bank and check their account summary and visualize the data. That would be something very cool. So yeah, mm -hmm. that is something. VR and banking. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much, Agufta. Let's give her another round of applause. Thank you.